spark to want to do it. It was just like going through the motions of, all right, I don't want to get on a plane and go to tour. It's just like, you should want to get on a plane and go travel and skate and shit. Everyone's problems was becoming my problem and I had my whole heart set into it and just people just blow smoke up your ass and I just got fed up with it. It was after my pig part, it's like, I left Black Label to go be the pro, first pro on pig, like thinking like, all right, cool, maybe I'll grow up and I'll be like a Lucero with Pig Wood. And that lasted one video part with all the talk of them telling me like, yeah, you can make it yours. I put up, I put like the team together. We like, and I had like the group of dudes where I'm like, all right, this could work. The video comes out and then I get the phone, yeah, it's not making enough money, like this and that. And I put my 100% into it for you guys to tell me you're putting it back into me. And it, I basically got shitted on. And that was just like the last time I wanted to do it. And I didn't want to milk it. Like I could, like when I got on Birdhouse, I was like, fuck, I can make a check. Like I could sit on my ass and just collect checks and put a tech deck out and get money. I was like, I don't want that fucking money. Like if I don't want to be a part of skateboarding, I don't want my name in there. So I just physically took myself out of it. Yeah, I don't know where all these stories uh -huh. come, but because I had fucking like a stomach problem, eating like problem, like it's my problem, it's no one's fucking business. Right. And I got super thinned out, like fucking, I was stressed out, I was fucking living uncomfortably. I was just like not right in my mind, like unhappy with everything. Like the one thing I really fucking love skateboarding, I was burn on. I don't yeah. have nothing to fall back on. Not like job wise, just like mentally to keep me sane, skateboarding kept me going. I'm addicted to heroin. Basically every bad thing and like weird thing you can think of, I've heard it. So like nothing shocking and I really don't care. I think it was a bet with Klein. Come on, let's do something I'm like, well, fucking, where's the loop at? And like, probably hung up the phone on me from what I can remember and then called me back like the next day. Tony's building the loop, you better get down here. I'm like, fucking for real? Like, all right, cool. I'd never seen this thing. I was just like, yeah, I'll try the loop. Go over to Tony's big warehouse. He's like, all right, it's, it's in the back. And I didn't see it. It was right there. And I was like looking around like, where the fuck is it at? And it's totally like, Oh my fucking god, Tony Hawk built this for me. I'm not that big of a brat. Like, I stuck to my word, like, all right, I gotta fucking try it. I'm like, I'm doing it with my fucking shoes off. And Tony's like, no, 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 you can't, it's liability. I'm like, well, I'm not doing it with any fucking pads. He's like, put on a helmet. I was like, all right, I'll put on a helmet. First try, I went, I completely went from the tranny straight up into my helmet and knocked, like, fucking, like, one of those bonkers and knocked my head back down. I was like, all right, so next time I better get around it. So long story short, I got like three good attempts, looped around it and smacked my fucking knee. My knee swelled up like a grapefruit. If I would have been wearing knee pads and listened to Tony Hawk, I would have done the loop. Build it. <laughs> Why'd you punch Andy Dick in the face? Andy Dick? Andy Dick. Cause you're sticking spoons in his ass? Did you break his nose? No. What? See, rumors, See? man. <laughs> but I was at a party where Andy Dick was sticking spoons up his ass. Everywhere we'd go, there was like three years where no matter what or where we'd go, we'd get kicked out. And it was because he'd punch somebody. Or throw a fit and like decide, I'm gonna take on the bouncer. I never went anywhere that I, that I decided to leave. This dude will not leave anywhere, so I'm like, all right, who the fuck do I gotta punch out to get this dude to give me a ride home? Like, you're it, and, I, and shit just happens. It's funny that way. Because when I don't go home until the party's over. A lot of people like make this big hoopla about making an entrance. I make it, but like, I'm making an exit. Like. I moved back to Vegas and I met my wife. She like snapped me out of it, got me back on track, and I just had a baby, and I got that spark back for skateboarding, like, instantly. I would rather quit skateboarding than quit skateboarding. That it's always gonna be a new. Like everyone's like the comeback and like I've said like I fucking wish I'd never said that word comeback because it's like I'm not I didn't fucking go anywhere like it's still in my mind like I would drive down the street like and I'm still looking at spots I'm still logging shit it's always engraved in you if you really want to skateboard and you're a skateboarder you never you can't quit it. He was like, I shit my pants in that demo. And I was like, wait a minute, we did doubles. You went over me in the front of there. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Time right there.